Welcome to What Ha Happened, the podcast where we talk about our latest chismes or gossip for you non Spanish speaking folks, crazy travel stories, hood memoirs, and food and wine. This is an adult podcast, so some of our topics may make our listeners a wee bit uncomfortable. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, listeners. This week we are having a special episode. It's a three parter because we have such an amazing guest, Luis C. Garza. So tune in Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now grab a glass of wine or a beverage of your choice and enjoy the show. All right, okay. I got volume level on everybody. So uh, let's begin. Let's do this. Yes. Oh, wow. It took a little while, but here we are. Welcome oh, to another son. episode of What ha Happened. And what ha happened today is that we came across this beautiful, majestic person that we are introducing to our podcast today. Luis e. Garza. <laughs> Tell us your name and introduce yourself. Um, my name is uh, Luis Garza, and um, soy de New York City, the South Bronx originally. Pero mi familia es mexicano hasta las copetes. Wow. Y yo soy chicano. Yes. Wow. We also have Heather. Heather. Hello. Heather. Introduce Heather. Heather, Heather Flores from the Bronx too. Like Luis. Uh, much respect. <laughs> I just came from the Bronx from last week. Saw so my family. Um, Puerto Rican, of course. Bronx. Ah, yeah. oh, Squid. Uh, gotta represent. There's not many of us out here. <laughs> not Rican. in LA, but in, in New York, yes. Yeah. I saw my whole family. It was nice. Yes. Um, so, hey, I'm Heather Flores. I work in the film industry, and uh, I'm proud to say that I direct and produce, and I love producing to direct, and I love directing to produce. <laughs> That's a good line. Yes. And uh, well, right now, uh, we're here with Luis Garza. And uh, I had the honor of producing his film that was directed by Alessandro Gentile. And um, it's called Razón de Ser. And I'm really proud of this one that I worked on. And I'm excited to be here on the behalf of Radium 88. Ooh. Nice. Alessandro, please introduce yourself. So my name is Alessandro Gentile. Um, I'm from LA, straight up, yeah. big time. Uh, my dad's from Argentina. My mom's from Mexico. They met on Vermont in sixth. I was Whoa. born in East LA. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's how that all goes. Um, Echo Park. Uh, no, 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 Park. no. So, <laughs> Echo Park. In the last episode, you said Echo Park, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one? East LA or Echo Park? No, no, no. Six in Vermont. I don't know. Yeah, six in Vermont. I don't know. It's kind of in, it's a tween. Know, it's a tween. It's a tween. It's a tween. It's a but um, yeah, I'm a director and cinematographer, and uh, I'm also uh, um, the co-owner of uh, Radio Mediate Productions, and had the privilege of working with this gentleman next to me here, uh, Luis Garza, and, and telling Heather, his story. Who's beautiful? Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, telling his wonderful story. It was uh, it was great to to, to to be part of that. So. And Rich. Hi, this is Rich Mo. Uh, um, I'm the other half of Waha Happened. That Waha Happened. This, this podcast. Punto but, com. Uh, we're here um, to talk to Luis. Uh, hopefully, we're going to have some good conversations right now and uh, give us some insight on a lot of stuff. But we got a lot of questions to ask because this is a, a movie that's going to be coming out at the LA Film Festival, right? Uh, yeah, Los so Angeles, the, the, the downtown Los Angeles Film Festival. Yeah, so we're really excited about that. Henry Priest, uh, the organizer over there, wonderful po person. He's uh, taking our project and uh, um, is going to world premiere it at Regal Live in downtown LA. So we're super excited about that because we actually planted that seed when we first started the project. We're like, everyone's like, oh, what do you want to do with this? And, um, first it started off as like a marketing promo video. It was <laughs> never a marketing kind of, promo video. Kind of. That was and the then, guys that you used hold on. <laughs> for it, Melissa to, get, to do it. <laughs> oh my God. Then, we are going to get to the nitty gritty of how this happened. <laughs> So okay, what so happened was, what tell happened us. Was, no, I'm going to take a second. I'm going to just readjust uh, Luis's mic for a second. Okay. Whoa. So what happened was so, uh, that this was a mar marketing was a campaign point. video that okay. actually Heather and I had a brilliant idea. 
to turn into a movie. So we just kind of expanded it into uh, um, deviously, deviously expanded it into a, um, a narrative uh, documentary about uh, Luis. Uh, you know, I think the, uh, we all kind of sold it after a while, right? Kind well, of this is the ultimate marketing. Yeah. See, we're looking on this on a whole other level. Big so picture. Bigger picture. You got the red carpet. You have all this going on. You have audiences that come in and see about your life. Oh my God. That is the marketing. So I we'll do, a... we promised we would do the other video. So we have to keep that promise. No, we have. I mean, this is, this is the video. It's like, it's like, you know, we, we, we uh, it's every, fun. everybody won. Everybody got what they needed. Luis, everybody's promoting the project and it's, it's great. I have a question for you. Yeah. How do you feel like, uh, because I know that you have done this for many years and then to be recognized at this level, like, how do you feel? I, I just am curious. Es un honor. It is um, a privilege, mm -hmm. humildemente, that I'm receiving the recognition that I'm receiving after so many decades of uh, working in this uh, cultural arts industry, business, um, cultura. Um, the meeting of Alessandro and Heather with me happens at the Riverside Art Museum where my exhibition, The Other Side of Memory, uh, produced by Melissa Richardson Banks, is taking place. And my first introduction is to so many different people, and in particular, in this case here, which turns out to be fate, los dioses mandan, uh, I come to meet uh, Heather and uh, Alessandro. And la semilla se plantó. Sí. La semilla se plantó. And, uh, y aquí estás <laughs> And so, so begins the relationship. Mm -hmm. A very uh, open, enjoyable one, much like we're having right now. Uh, we go to the restaurant next door, we break out the drinks, tapas y vino, and uh, empezamos a hablar. And uh, we begin to get to know one another. And as in all relationships, uh, uh, it begins. And... Uh, you begin to get a sense of each other, you begin to grow and share uh, with each other. And uh, the idea for a documentary film about me and who I am begins to unfold. And the Q&A begins. <laughs> Honestly, I feel very honored to have you here because uh, they have, you know, told me so much about your past, and I I feel honored the fact that you would even come on our platform, ah. which is not <laughs> like no. super el, eh, el honor el honor es mío, el honor es mío. No, de pero de hecho, en las conversaciones que tuvimos antes de empezar, you know, I I feel in the the fact that you school me on you know, the Irish Mexican situation. I'm like, oh my God, it, I, I love to receive uh, this kind of knowledge and, and I feel like you are giving us. Mm. And so I, I want you to share your knowledge with our people, you know, the people that are following us, the five <coughs> people. Yeah, everybody's gonna want to, everybody wants to know. <laughs> the I mean, five, five of us? People. Everybody yeah. wants to know. The five people that are following us, like, so, which is us. <laughs> but no, seriously, no, and, and, and it, it just, I, I admire you so much. Ah, gracias por eso. It's a chisme, puro chisme, puro you know. Chisme. Uh, chisme. It's a, okay, and you did what? And you did when? Y como? Y no. Waha! Uh -huh. Well, I have the one. No, but how did you start your career? How did you begin? Like, what? How did it begin? It's the origins story. That's yes, what, that's what, I am curious about that's your That's what Alessandro and Heather has so eloquently, so yes. magically, so creatively have done. Within the 12-minute clip. Uh, 12 minutes? 
uh, it's just uh, the trailer, it's just the introduction to a larger story which evolves. So as we begin to get into the storyline, what makes a good cinematographer, what makes a good producer, director, uh, is the recognition that there is a story and there is a story to be told. Mm -hmm. That's, we're storytellers. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's what we are. We're simply storytellers within a craft mm -hmm. that we maximize to tell the story. This is the outlet for the story. Mine began as a photographer when I first picked up a camera. Um, and it, it evolved. Uh, it evolved into independent film production, into theater, into nonprofit arts organizations, into festivals, into a variety of different uh, aspects of uh, cultural arts production. So that is my basic storyline that uh, Alessandro and Heather have explored. Mm -hmm. And it's a wonderful process of going through it because hay tantos chismes y hay tantos cuentos que, de veras, you want to know about this? No, pues tell me. Yeah. I want to know. <laughs> what happened What was? happened? <laughs> <laughs> That's why this is called this, because I want to know your fucking chisme. <laughs> like, I, yo soy la chismosa de, de grupo, and I'm like, bitch, tell, bitch, bitch, tell me about your chisme. Tell me 100%. And, and what's, what's great is that, you know, like, you know, at the Riverside Art Museum, and when we met for dinner, it was great to, like, just be able to just, just talk. Mm -hmm. and just get to know each other right and we kind of started throwing ideas and like you know it's just, it just more like kind of like a, a personal kind of connection which is really nice yes. like, and it's something like an approach like uh, Heather and I had started doing like when we first started the company was like let's just hang out let's not pull out the camera oh let's, let's not talk about like the schedule the yes. next day let's not talk about like you know what questions we're going to ask them like we're just going to sit down and just have a conversation and just get to know each other because we realize that we yield better results that way as mm -hmm. filmmakers, right? And it's it's a um, it's a wonderful thing because we've kind of continued doing that. It just really helped us. But we also just really having a human moment with the subject, and it's not all business and kind of like camera and all this stuff. It's more like who are we as people and uh, and connecting with them, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that was the beautiful part, and that's why the images. I don't know if you, when you see the film, it's like. He was very comfortable. We were very, we were already like kind of, you know, got to. And, and that's exactly uh, why Rich and I started this is because we wanted to have the, exactly the same feeling of like we can have people come over. You can talk about whatever it is, but it's it's very cozy and warm. What, what I do want to interject here is when we started the company Radium Eighty Eight we made it clear that we're just taking on projects that we want. Ah. So us connecting with you is because we, well, what's a better word than wanted? We were interested. It has to, because it's so passionate. To do this, you Craved. have to really care. You have to really want to know because it takes time to do this. It's not just like, oh, we come and film. It's not a corporate gig, you know? And so we actually have to want to and like invest the time and the connection, the energy to do this and the money. <laughs> but um, just know that the projects we take on is because we want to. We have the absolute privilege to be able to do that. Well, that's how we made our business model. Mm -hmm. That was obvious to me and has become obvious to me in terms of your commitment, both as uh, artists primarily as professional business people, as one who is sensitive to the subject matter that you take on. Uh, and that taking me on uh, without having an necessarily an end result is a challenge for uh, a beginning company. It's not an easy feat. I've been there, I understand that. And so, um, I applaud you, and I'm 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 flattered, I'm honored, I'm uh, uh, saying okay. Um, in this very short time, we have connected on a number of levels, which is quite a, quite a breakthrough because I can be a very cynical 
optimistic person. But it's the optimism what? which overcomes the cynicism yes. and allows for the collaboration yeah. that has taken place. And as an artist who has always worked behind the camera, behind the scenes and putting productions together, I very seldom come in front and I very seldom impose my sensibilities upon the production outside of saying, uh, we got a budget, we got a time limit, and let's get the job done. Or who do I have to, to get off this production? You know, uh, It comes down to that sometimes. So in this case, uh, taking this on, taking me on as a subject uh, was uh, intriguing to me that my background, my history uh, was of any interest. Uh, what creates the interest in a particular individual? Oftentimes it's very enigmatic. It's uh, eth ethereal, e ethereal, mm -hmm. you know? It's, um, it's vague. Uh, you have to put the substance to the subject matter to attract an audience. And within the 12 minute, 15 minute trailer that you have produced, I've watched it over and over and I said, damn, I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, um, I know my history, I know my background, but the ability to edit the disconnects into a connective tissue, mm -hmm. that is the that is the craft of storytelling. And the ability to storytell and take that thread and do. weave it and draw the colors and the nuances of that particular person to hold that view in audience, that's a skill set. Yes. That's a skill set. And everybody that has seen this trailer that you have produced thus far has responded in kind to me saying, I didn't know that about you. I said, well, I hardly knew that about myself until uh, <laughs> uh, Alessandro and Heather put it together. I love it. You know, because there are these gaps in, in, in the timeline. No, I, I totally understand what you're saying. And it's true. It's, it's how they, they do the storytelling. And for I, I honestly, sorry, I never heard about you until they told me about you. And so... That's what makes it beautiful. Sorry. <laughs> That's the greatest. But when, you know. once they, and I, I saw the clip, and, and I was just like, oh my God, this guy is so fucking amazing. And just like your, for example, uh, in the movies, they always uh, project all these people, da da da. But it's stories like yours that should be highlighted because this is for me for me when i saw this video clip it's like a uh, hope is what it's sold to be mm. literally it's sold to me hope mm. because you come from and you're so humble you come from this very humble situation and you were just a photographer but you were there in a in a very critical point and so, yeah, you know, I just. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's again the ability of Heather and uh, <coughs> Alessandro and Melissa Richardson Banks, uh, the producer, um, in having the sensibilities of saying, wait a minute, this is a story worth bringing to the forefront. That you don't know me is mm -hmm. not something to apologize for. Uh, nobody knows me until recently. It's only taken 50, close to 60 years. So, you know, wow. uh, it's like uh, I used to work so hard decades ago when, when my mother used to live with me. She took ill. She lived with me for a while. And I'd be working at the kitchen table like this with papers and stacks and uh, scripts and doing so much hard work and a calculator and todo. Y mamá salía de, de su cuarto para ir al baño and she'd stop at the kitchen door and she'd look at me and she'd go, Ay, mijo, you work so hard but you don't make no money. Oh, no. <laughs> you, you should become a dentist. They, <laughs> they never run out of teeth. 
And I, <laughs> I nod my head and I go, Ching, oh, she's right. And then she'd, uh, she'd stop again on her way back to the bedroom and she'd look at me and she'd just, hi, and go to the, go to, go to the bedroom. I may they have a own, kind of, bring. I was ready to do a Harry Carry, man, you know, I just, <laughs> and then I said, or is it too late to go to dental school? Wow. You know, it's a little too late. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a tough business that we're in. Mm. It's, a, it's a very tough business it, it that really we're in. It really is. You're right. 100%. And to survive economically, mm -hmm. you have to be so dedicated. You have to overcome whatever fears, doubts, uh, insecurities. Yes. While it's all going on, you're yes. saying, No, que a la chingada, aquí voy, sí. adelante. Sí. Adelante, raza. Sí. <laughs> you know? you know, we were just talking about this on the drive here, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. We're like, just kind of like, you know, I don't, I don't like to work for, for anybody. I, mean I don't too. think you like to work for anybody. Well, we're working for ourselves. Like if we're going to work for ourselves, might as well be broke working for ourselves, right? Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yes, 100%. And like, like I said, you know, I used to work for a very a, a government company. Yeah, it's all secret over there. And, and so, but I left because I can't live my life with somebody telling me what the fuck to do without asking questions. So even though I think it's not kosher, I have to follow directions, mm. you know, and, and I cannot work in an environment where I am a fucking pawn, mm -hmm. basically. And my grandfather always told me, mira, La razón que tú no tienes religión es porque tú eres independiente. O sea, tú no necesitas. Sí. Hay gente que lo necesita, pero yo no lo necesito. Y me dijo él, y así, y dijo, oh, ok, bueno. So, you know, working, but leaving this cushy government job meant that I was going to be broke. And... I did it because I wanted to pursue my artistic side, you know. Of course. I know I can be a pawn. I can be a fucking pawn and get paid, you know, 60, 70,000 a year. But do I want to do that? Like, no, because my artistic side mm -hmm. tells me, a la verga. <laughs> dance, dance, dance. A la verga. Exactly. And I'm like, no, I think I'm going to become a dancer. <laughs> and, you know, like. Right, but it's funny, adding to that, too, it's like, you know, people, the tough part is taking the leap, right? So you take the leap, right? Mm -hmm. But it's um, it's really scary. Yes. To take mm -hmm. that leap. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the net's always going to be there. Yes. So you're not going to hit the rocks at the bottom, right? Luis, can I ask you, like, uh, starting out, I just know, because. I guess it's a very common question for artists all around, you know, like in, in my business, it's, it, it's, you know, editing is an artistic endeavor. And, but, you know, to get those jobs, it's just like, I think I've, when I first started, I, I must have given hundreds of resumes, even starting out and nobody would call me back. But like, what? I just kept going and going and going. I just wouldn't stop. I didn't, it didn't matter to me if people told me there was no work or, you know, not right now. I just kept going and going until... You know, I finally found a place, but you know, how how is it in your experience? Like, what 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 kind of, like? How would you want over like if you're speaking to other artists, photographers, you know, um, or any kind of artist like wanting to do their craft? What would you do? You have any suggestion or kind of tip or like, hey, you know, just advice. You know, advice like keep pursuing what your passion is, uh, keep in mind also that you have to fund your passion. That's uh, simple economics. Yes. Right? <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, you have uh, rent, you have food, you have family, children. Uh, whatever your circumstances are, there's always a, a monetary need. And so your work entering into the arts, there's no guarantee that uh, a school degree is going to give you an entree. 
into a particular profession. Uh, while you do get uh, the BA or the AA or the PhD, um, there is some guarantee. But applied to the arts, and in particular, what aspect of the arts, because it's a wide field. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many different categories. So you, like uh, any profession, you have to be able to find that niche mm -hmm. within that profession. Um, Minds was more of an exploration by experimentation, by accidental intervention. It was an evolution to a revolution uh, that took place. Let me wrap on. Um, it's a, as I said in the documentary, I, I didn't become a photographer because I had any intentions of being a photographer. Because that was my next question is that when you started on this endeavor of you know taking pictures, did, did you ever think it was a job or was it something that like, you know, I'm just gonna, I like doing, I'm just gonna do this and did it just like turn into something that you just kept getting asked yeah. to do? <clears throat> you eloquently said you that know. in the film, right? In the film. Yeah, well, yeah. That, that's why that's the beauty of uh, the piece that uh, Heather and uh, Alessandro put together. It's being able to select my comments that I'm I'm making, which are spontaneous out of me. Uh, it's a little bit of psychiatric work that they both did on me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, lay down on the couch and uh, where did it all begin? <laughs> you know? I, I do want to say Tell I, us all about I'm getting it. too much credit for this. Okay. No, no. Heather. Alessandra, and, listen. And, and Heather. No, no, I no. Want to open up you honestly, you guys really are, don't mind me. Under no. really the work that you both do. To me, to me, it's fucking, it, it, when I saw the clip, so Rich said it to me, and this is how I knew of you, but it, it really, how you guys produced it, I really understood his life. So you guys mm -hmm. did, um, uh, like you did justice. Oh, cool. You did justice for his life. It's a, co it's, a, it's a collaborative effort, both spoken and unspoken. Uh, again, the role that I play in the work that I do has always been behind the camera, mm. behind yes. the scenes. Yes. Yo no me pongo en frente. Sí, claro. It ain't about me. Yes. It's about the subject. It's about putting together the subject for a presentation to a much larger audience, which is the craft of storytelling. But how they presented it is like a person who is of Hispanic descent, who does all this amazing photography. And now, like, okay, recently, uh, since we started our production company, I became a photographer. But, you know, I, I can only hope and wish that, you know, I, I would be known and represented how you are being now. So. Well, again, it's an origin story. And uh, what is being done and what I've begun to do on my own in terms of if nobody's going to recognize me, I have to begin to recognize myself. Yes. And you have to give yourself the authority to do so. Mm -hmm. You have yes. to say to yourself, where did I begin? It wasn't, well, apart from when the doctor pulled you out of your mama and <laughs> the only pegada. La uh, uh, una nalgada. Uh, you know, and you let out your first uh, right. grito. Uh, <laughs> It begins. Um, picking up the camera, as I said, was a, a birthing experience. Um, the camera for me and working in the dark room was a very maternal process for me. It was the closest that I came to feeling the feminine side of me in that developing 
the photographic print through the chemical process and seeing the evolution of taking the photograph, which is the impregnation, and then taking that egg, that cell, mm. into the dark room, mm. and then projecting light and giving birth to it through the chemical process mm. and seeing the image develop in front of you is very feminine Whoa, to me. Whoa, I've never thought about it like it's this. It's a very oh my feminine God. Thank you so much process of birthing. Well, it's oh birthing. My God. That's my baby. I did see what I saw. Mm. I did photograph what I did. Mm -hmm. I taught, I taught putty tat. I did! <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did <laughs> saw putty tats. <laughs> you see? So it, it's, it's that sensibility that I always, it was always magic to me because it was a birthing process. But in that birthing process, you're also refining. It's the editing process. You're looking at light, you're looking at exposure, you're looking at chemicals, mm -hmm. you're looking at paper, you're looking at a variety of elements that come into giving that birth, that child, uh, uh, an identity, a definition, ability to present it. Because when you bring that baby out and people look at it and say, ay, que feo, ay, que lindo, ay, <laughs> ay, ay, que chulo, cuchi, 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 cuchi. You know, it's, it's all of those elements. Yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> it, it's like... I'm sure Heather and, and Alessandro and certainly Melissa all feel the same way when they first saw that. They go, oh, my God, what do we got here? Yeah. They just gave birth. Yeah. Well, it's great, too. Like, the, the, the example I have on my end is more like, you know, when you capture slow motion, right? Because I'm capturing it in real time. I don't see it in slow-mo. But I know that um, there's nuances, there's things that you're capturing on camera that I will see later in post-production. I'll mm -hmm. be like, oh, shit, that's a really cool, like, look. <laughs> Or that's a really cool um, camera going up to his eye. You know, things that um, I don't see live because I'm seeing it in real time. Mm -hmm. But then later, uh, when I see it in slow motion in my editing suite, it's, it's really cool to see those little the cool little surprises, yeah. those like nice little nuances and exactly. things. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's sort and, of similar to what you're saying. But, yeah. And you stitch it together. I mean, that's the editing you process. Together, yeah. You stitch it together. I got to tell you, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was torturing for for like a week and a half i was like literally in the office i think she was out of town i was just like just locked up in the office just pacing listening 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 because you had so many wonderful things to say i mean again this is a small film that we want to make into a feature so right now that, that's the next goal the next goal is to get it out we want to get funding we want to turn off the phone and we want to just make a movie you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Can I, can so, come right. again. Come again. Sorry, come again. So, so please tell us about your feature because we have been kind of dancing around yeah. this for a long time. Yeah. So the, just tell us. Yeah. So directly. pretty much the expanded version of uh, Luis's film, Razón de Ser, would be just really telling the story and trying to f trying to really follow the journey of him finding a home for all his archive. So his archive is so valuable. You have at least how many images? I have anywhere from eight to 15,000 images or more. So it'd be following that process, him finding a home for all his work and just continuing to flesh out. And there's, there's so many people that were involved with his project and like curating his show and finding, you know, going into his archives. Uh, Duron's one of them. Um, and some wonderful people that uh, um, we want to sit down and start interviewing and talking to and expanding the story because there's a bigger story here. And the thing with Luis is that Luis is a team person, so he loves to just, you know, he, it's all about team. Oh it's not God. about, like, me, me, me. Yes. I never got one ounce of, like, me monster from Luis, Dude. which is a beautiful thing. And I think that's what really attracted me to, like, just being wanted to be around you, wanted to you know, be involved with you and wanted to, you know, just create and, 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 and well, tell your story. Not to speak in behalf of you, but uh, to me, you became like a very personable person. Mm -hmm. Like, you came to Rich Mo's house, and then, pero autom automaticamente eh, estabas platicando conmigo, mm -hmm. like nothing, you know. And so, to me, this is for me like 
Oh, wow. You are a person that is very personable. You know, like you don't, even though they're making a film about you and you're, you have such great accomplishments, but you are still so humble to just speak to me like, ah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you eh, literally eh, came eh, to eh, me. Eres buena onda. <laughs> no, es no. como dicen los mexicanos, ay, no te pones. <laughs> A poco, ¿Qué? Sí, ¿A poco? No está, no está. ¿A poco? ¿Qué, ¿Qué crees? No, pero no sí, crees. es cierto. No, 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 no. Porque no. yo pensé, cuando me dijeron ellos, y yo estaba pensando así como que, wow, es una persona que. No, there's no diva de Of the higher caliber, of, you know, higher caliber. And so I'm like, wow, you know, I'm gonna be below them, etc. And but you came in literally and just were so conversational. We've been having a conversation way before we even started the post the podcast. Yeah, we and carpooled together, so there was, no, there was no Uber Black or anything. <laughs> 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 we were not on an ex, ex, expedition. <laughs> no, but as we were trying to even set this up, we were having a conversation, and, and I thought it was gonna be very difficult because I am not at your caliber and I am a photographer as well but uh, of course not at your level and so to me I was like oh my god I want to be like this you know and so but just the fact that you are so humble and and, and that you are so personable and that you can connect with a person like me that is just like you know, I I, I, I I value your history. Muchísimas you gracias por ese sentimiento. Pero we are all on equal plane. Um, I am always in a learning curve. Mm -hmm. Ni arriba, ni abajo. Pero in a level plane, um, again, we're all storytellers here. Right, so from that point of view, um, there is no, there is no hierarchy. There is mm -hmm. simply a, mm -hmm. a, a shared experience mm -hmm. that we have. How we can polish each other is yeah. really the way to think of it. Okay. Uh, yeah. How my experiences polish your experiences, your experiences polish mine. Because I certainly cannot dance in the level that you can dance, okay? <laughs> as much as I aspire to, even after a couple of glasses of wine, <laughs> um, I can't match your dancing capabilities. So it's a, it's a point of shared interest, shared uh, talents, shared skills that we all bring to the table. And that's the wonderful thing of working not only with Heather and with uh, Alessandro, but we have a whole team of people that we are working with. Um, Eva uh, Crawford, who was the catalog designer for the uh, exhibition catalog. Uh, Melissa Richardson Banks, who's the producer, who's brought us all together, really. Uh, it was she who introduced me to uh, Alessandro and Heather. Um, a number of other people who are involved uh, with the production that we are working on, and you can see in those credits, and many more people uh, who go back in time to get to this point. I didn't arrive here on my own. I arrived here with the support and the help and the love uh, of so many people. You are such a icon to me, mm. you know, and but to all of us. We don't uh, usually recognize people like you. And so I, I'm so glad that, you know, they, they, you guys brought up this project and made it accessible to everybody like me, who I didn't know who you were. And so... And I think that's the point, yeah? Yeah, yeah. exactly. To bring, pr to bring yes. you to the world and kind of yes. show like... Yes, uh, exactly. Because for me, when I, when, you know... I've known about you, and then when they had this opportunity to do this project, I was really excited, and I'm like, oh wow, they made the movie, they made the movie, 
And it's just like, it melts my heart because it's just like, you know, you're a hero. You're, you're giving history. You're preserving history. You're speaking volumes with your images. Yes. And, oh my God, you know, yes. I'm glad they have the opportunity to put this out right now because we could talk about it and we could put it out and we could share the story with everybody. Because to me, that's important. You know, to me, our history is important. The history. Yes. Of us. When I say us, I mean all of us, you know, just people, the community. Because we're all artists. We're starving artists. Everybody. We're starting. <laughs> we're starving. <laughs> uh, uh, but that, I, I'm actually doing pretty good. <laughs> well, well but, not to me, but OK. But that's why we have. Well, I spent many years. I'm done. I'm done starving. It's Whoa. all about the belly full and passing the. Whoa. <laughs> I am not quite there yet, but it's, a, it's, a, mindset. So yeah, it's yeah, a mindset. Yeah, I, I, I want to say, yeah, like much like Lala, there's a lot of folks who who don't know you, don't yeah. know your work, and exactly. you know, there's a lot of, you know, it's just like a lot of. I'm sure, you know, when people see your images, they're like, oh yeah, they recognize things. They look at stuff and go like, oh, I know that. But who's the man behind the, you know, the, the camera? Yes. Yes. You know? yes. Right. yes. So, I, I mean, and for the, you know, because, you know, a lot of people are going to listen to this and they're going to say, well, who is Louis Gosh, you know? Well, you're going to watch the movie, but, you know, he's right here, you know, and he's got a lot to say with you. You got a lot to say with the images, you know, it says so much. And I'm so glad they had that movie to share with the world. And, and, uh, when, when, so the, he the movie's in the he his, he's got, he's got a book. You guys, can you talk about the book. Yeah, he talk yeah, about the book. Let's talk about the book. Like, yeah, uh, so like the you want to talk about yeah, the the, uh, the exhibition catalog, uh, which is what began all of this, um, is uh, titled "The Other Side of Memory," and that title uh, comes about uh, through the curator Armando Duron, who selected the sixty six images for the exhibition that opened up at Riverside Art Museum, uh, which is where um, it was a debut. And it was a, a project that evolved over a 10, 15 year period. It was an overnight. Wow. Um, it, it comes out of a, a first publication called uh, uh, Time Refocus, also curated by Armando Duron. Uh, Armando de Rome was one of the first people who ever went into my archive materials. Uh, when I began to open up my archives and develop in the Siqueiros uh, exhibition at the Archie Museum, which is really when I started coming out. And it's David Alfaro Siqueiros, the Mexican muralist, who gives me the inspiration, gives me the courage, and launches me to come back into public view. Not that I was in public view prior, but all of my experiences prior to that were really very quiet and behind the scenes. I had been doing photography and independent film work and festivals and other projects on my own, uh, wherever I could to support myself. Um, and those projects were, for the most part, just very small very community-oriented, um, television shows and things like that that I did. Um, no fanfare, no, no great big PR, you know, uh, nothing like that, no red carpets, anything like that. You just did the work, you got the product out there, you did the work, that was it. Um, and then there's uh, those periods of time where you're not producing, you're not doing anything. You're you're below the radar. You're doing every, everybody else's work or whatever work you can find just to survive. Uh, I think we've all experienced that. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, and then all of a sudden, um, you reach a point where it's a turning point. It's like uh, a ballet. Uh, you pivot and you turn. And there's an epiphany. And you realize there's a long road ahead of you, but You've chosen the road. You've made your decision. The hardest part is making the decision. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So yes. Because oh, my God, yes. It takes you a long time before you have the confidence, the wherewithal, and the ability to say, you know what? 
I only got one path. I'm going to go for it. And, yes. you, and you go for yeah. it. And yes. you make the decision. A hundred fucking percent. And it's kind of like this what Radio Media is all about. That is yes. Yes. Yeah, and about. that is what uh, Fresh Rich. Produce Productions yeah. is yeah. about. That's what because I think it, I literally, we literally left. I left a very prominent government job to pursue this. And here we are today, you know. It's liberation. Yes, yeah. it's, it's fucking yeah, so. It's, it's, it's so I cannot live my though. life. You gotta take the yes. leap. You, know, you gotta take earlier. the leap. You gotta take the leap. And sometimes it's, you know, sometimes you gotta like. I mean, I, I raised four kids. I was like, okay, when do, do I just do you know do something just to make sure they're they're all taken care of, and now they're gone, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do whatever I want, but. You know, for me that was a turn. Like, wow. Okay. Yeah, you I'll, can I'll raise for kids. It's okay to, to me, focus on you. It's yeah, okay. No, it is, it is. <laughs> yeah, and but, it's hard to accept that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh my and god. And make the decision. My to kid do told that. me. Yeah. My kid told me, "Mom, you can go live your life." Thank you. Right. He, he literally <laughs> said this at the age of eighteen. You got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. Right. If you don't start, it's just like everybody starts at zero. Yes. Like, weren't we all yes. at zero at one point? Right. You know, it's just like, you just got to be in the right, you know, maybe it's the right place at the right time, but sometimes it's the volume of work and then people just say, hey. Wrong time at like, the right time. I just time. think it's the right time and I also think it's having the audacity. Yeah. Whoa. To say this is who I am. This is yes. What I'm doing. Yeah. The Period. audacity. Oh it's my god. It's the audacity, god. the confidence. Yes. When you get to a certain point, yes, especially please. around my age right now, you're like, wow. It's do or die, <clears throat> ride or die, honey. This is it. This is what I love to do. This is what we're doing. We made a commitment. We made a decision, mm -hmm. and we're fucking doing it. Yeah. Because there's no, there's nothing else to do. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Except I was that. literally in my late twenties at that time because you know I had my kid when I was like thirteen. So, literally, he's 18. He says, Mom, do this. And I said, okay, darling. So, I'm out. Hmm. Like, I'm out. Like, I'm out. Well, I'm out. <laughs> I, I, I think that that's a common thread then around yes. here. We all found liberation in declaring our independence. Yes. Mm. And independence. You got to yeah. declare it. You gotta declare. And you gotta, you gotta know it. it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Not just think about it. You actually have to put in the work. Yeah. You have to put in. You have to put in something to get something. Well, mm -hmm. the, you know? the history of any successful person that you've ever listened to, and there's so many that you listen to, and you begin to say they they all have a theme, and the theme is they 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 gave themselves permission. Yes. And regardless yes. of what level they are, that they have achieved, they had to go through this transitory process of making the decision to do what it is that they decided to do. And uh, as B.B. As King would sing, I've been down so long it looks like up. <laughs> <laughs> and if it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck at all. What? Okay? <laughs> so, yeah, it's exactly. an inward <laughs> function. Yeah. It's an inward work and an inward fight. Exactly, exactly. Whoa. So it, 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 it's, it's a... It's an, it's a, it's an in, inner turmoil uh, where you can't afford to go to a psychiatrist who's going to charge you $100 an hour for you to tell him what it is that you're not doing, that you can't <laughs> finally come to realize that you're doing. And you're saying, wait a minute, I should have been paying myself. So you didn't have the confidence. You didn't have the confidence to fess up to yourself. You had to fess up to somebody else who's saying, "And what do you think about it?" <laughs> well, I'm paying you a hundred dollars <laughs> an hour to ask me what I think about it, and this that's is really all, all that matters is what you think. Exactly. So thoughts are things. Exactly. Right. So. What a fucking scam. Okay. <laughs> you, know, you know what I do want to say? I want to bring this to Melissa Richardson Banks. She's not here tonight. But um, Melissa, she's given me a lot of opportunities in my life and my career. So I do want to, with that said, okay, very important, starting from 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, she told me about you, right? And she's so passionate and so... She just loves your work. And she's put so much into you, unlike I've ever seen. And it's cool because Melissa, who doesn't Melissa know, okay? <laughs> she's worked in this a long time, especially specifically Chicano art. And, you know, 
I paid attention. Mm-hmm. And um, and she was, you know, I, I just got to just thank her immensely. Yeah, absolutely. Because she introduced us. And, and the whole Duardo connection, right? Oh, the whole, yeah, the whole Duardo connection. Well, I met her through Richard Duardo. Okay, so here's yeah. where... Here's the interconnecting. Oh wow! Links. Okay, now between, I see. I'm starting to see the connection. Right. So, which we allude to in the film very little. Yes. Yeah. But the interconnecting links between us is fate, is karma, is meant to be, without knowing that it's meant to be. But as it begins to happen and it begins to unfold in front of you, you begin to see the connections between us not knowing each other personally until this point in yes. time, <laughs> oh my God, yes. you begin to travel through space and time. Yes. I am a conduit. That's all I am. We it's as my, it's we're as talking my, about this in our last recording. Well, it's as my mentor, Margot Albert, used to say, Luisito, we are just conduits. Let the energy flow. Let the energy flow. Don't stop it let the energy flow we are conduits that's all realize in yourself that you are an energy conductor and whatever skill whatever talent you have you are sharing it and so that's what we're doing right here at this table right now that's what we're doing with all the others that are within our sphere Uh, all those ripple effects all those Uh, celestial effects I truly believe in that I've come to believe in that Um, I've come to understand that there is a razón de ser that title comes about after a a few bottles of wine and a conversation up on the rooftop at your house (laughs) I think there was a fire pit involved (laughs) (laughs) he has a great place by the way uh, his view of Los Angeles is epic uh, that's where we have Nosh Night, yes. uh, which uh, will be coming up and you'll be joining night. us. Melissa's coming into town for the opening, so we're going to be having Nosh Night. Uh, Nosh night. And uh, I, I view what's happening for me right now as a compression and an expression of everything that I've lived through, and I'm 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 enjoying the uh, the sparks that are evolving out of it Mm. because at the same time it's bringing out those elements within each of us in our own personal lives that we are relating to so again it's not about me it's about we yes and everybody is feeling it because when we get together we all are just extending that energy and it's a wonderful feeling when you gather with fellow artists who are in that state of mind Equally, mm-hmm. it's it's fabulous. <laughs> Prosperity happens. Yes, please. it's amazing. How yes, it's fist bumps, fist bumps, fist bumps. Fist bumps. What what? Yes. What what? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. We are conduits. Connected. Yes. Connected. We are connected. We are conduits. Yes. Exactly, yes. man. Yes. And that energy just flows, yes. man. Or as as uh, Margot used to say to me, también when I was. Really rough on the edges. <laughs> really rough on the edges. <laughs> and she would, uh, my knees would be tapping. I would be very impatient as she's trying to explain theory and explain the inner workings of uh, of the method acting system that she was so much a part of. And she would put her hand on my knee because my knee was tapping. And she would say, Calmate, calmate, breathe, breathe. And I'd look at her and she'd say, Coitus interruptus. Mm-hmm. And I go, <coughs> what? She said, coitus interruptus. I said, what's that? She goes, ay, Luisito, you have so much to learn. Why? A poco, no mentes. Coitus interruptus? Yes. <laughs> Let it happen. <laughs> Let it happen. Go Let with the happen. flow. Wow. 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 That, that, that happened. That happened. Wow. <laughs> and so, Apparently, coitus interrupts it. So I went, home, I went home that evening and broke out the dictionary and go, oh, my God. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I, like, I, I said, I said, <laughs> que bruto. <laughs> que bruto. <laughs> 
Qué bruto. All right? That's how ignorant. That's how rough. That's how uninformed, underinformed, how uneducated I was. And that is the, the rough edges that need to be polished. So... I heard wine daily, minute by minute. You have Every to... Every thought. You have Dilution. to polish. Yes. You have to polish. Every thought. Every yeah. millisecond. You have to polish. Yes. And so... Uh, it, it's... Uh, I think it's for all of us. Yeah. In the work that we do. Because you're saying you spent... How many weeks going back and forth, listening over and over and over and over and seeing until you finally clicked with that mm -hmm. that process of refinement, mm -hmm. that editorial process, that imaginative process of the nuances mm -hmm. between imagery and word spoken and unspoken word. Oh my God! You you literally just yes okay yes because when you look at that. That, that, that poetry in motion, that explanation of who is this character, mm -hmm. and you begin to see the nuances captured, and I look at it, being the criticon that I am, because... <laughs> uh, 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 I was so nervous to show you, man. Uh, uh, I, I'm so saying nervous. to myself, whoa, okay. Uh, and between us, we polished, you know, for... Between us and the people who are listening to us as well. As well. Which so, is maybe five other people. That's not true. Don't listen to her. <laughs> Don't listen to her five people. <laughs> five which right is now. the five people that are that's listening okay. right that's, now, that's what which you is grew us. From. That's what you grew from. <laughs> no, I, I remember when he was struggling, trying to find the vision, because it's about a vision, mm -hmm. right? I knew you would get it, but... <laughs> As an artist, you had to like wrestle yeah, with that wrestle. within yourself. I'm and so he it. locked away in the office. He was like doing his thing. But I knew it. I knew the vision was going to come. But, Absolutely confident without even a doubt. You but, know, but you had to get there on your own. That was like yeah. beyond, you know. It's exactly that, Heather, that you're, 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 you're speaking about. It's, it's you as a producer uh, working with the director, cinematographer, you have a shared vision, but you respect the visionary in the craft of crafting that vision. Yeah. I look at it and I said, Boca cerrada no entra mosca. Huh? <laughs> Let me see what he comes up with. It's the same thing I experienced with... Um, Armando Duron, as a curator of the exhibition, who I had never worked with an Alessandro or an Armando Duron. I'd never worked with somebody interpreting my work or my life experience. Mm, wow. So for me, I know who I am, I know what I am, but I find it interesting to see how other people Perceive interpret me, you? see me. No voy a decir nada. All right? Oh, my God. I didn't even think about this perspective. Literally, you're plugging me into a perspective that I, I would never think I would never think about. Sorry. Apparently, I'm not talking into the mic. But anyway, um, yeah, it's you're, you're literally putting me into this perspective that I... <laughs> but no but thank you for because I, I i would never have thought this a uh, perception on my own i would have never thought like this so thank you for listening to us please tune in tomorrow for part two of this episode see you then to follow us, you can go to whatahappened.com for a link to all of our social media and to read our bios. If you would like us to read your story, maybe funny or scary or just some hat cheese, please.
please email us at stories at whatthehappened.com.